My next guest spent part of his teenage years living out of a beat up station wagon with his family. Well, now he's got $13 million in collectible cars, three homes, and he says he's worth over 130 million bucks. Kashbin is one of the most exciting entrepreneurs in the world today. With real estate holdings in excess of a quarter of a billion dollars, Manny also has a world-class car collection that would make even the finest car connoisseurs envious. I came from Iran yeah. at age 14. I was a skinny little boy, you know, that escaped, uh, you know, that regime going to the war and all that stuff. Yeah. And my dad and my mom and three siblings, you know, they decided to leave Iran two weeks before my 14th birthday. Because at age 14, you, you know, they basically make you um, go to the army and you can't really leave the country. Plus, none of us spoke a word of English. So it was very difficult to come here and not be able to communicate. We only had $2,000, you know, uh, cash when we arrived to USA. My dad was uh, promised a job by his friend that owned the gas station. And two nights at their house, we were forced to leave. So we ended up buying a 1972 Datsun station wagon and that became our home for a couple of weeks until my dad was able to get a job uh, after a few weeks, raise enough money for his security deposit for a one bedroom uh, apartment. Now I was basically carrying all the guilt because everyone's suffering because of me. That really was like built my personality. I had to grow to be a man. Fear is, you know, always with you. You know, I don't know anyone that, you know, honestly can say they don't have fear in life, you know? You have fear of something, or, you know, or another. But if your motivation exceeds fear, you're, you're always gonna overcome it. So at 16, I was legally um, able to work, and I applied for a job at Kmart, and I was click 407. I was a, you know, clerk to clean the bathrooms, a stock room, mop the floors, and I found this company that's selling multi-level marketing door-to-door -door sales. Uh, WWI, so I called them, he said earn 500. At the time I was earning $3.15 an hour, a little over 100 bucks a week. So I'm like, wow, that's five times more than I'm making. So I quit Kmart, I went and worked for that company. And within four to five months, I was one of their top salespeople. And then one night, uh, me and my dad are shopping at uh, Price Club. Back then it was in Costco, it was Price Club. And I did a quick math on the nuts uh, and cashews and trail mix. And I'm like, wait, they're selling these for $3 a pound. This company is selling it to me for double. Why don't I just buy the nuts from uh, Price Club and bag them and sell them myself? And then I used my dad's PC to print the labels and I started my own business when I was 18. And this one guy bought three bags. And next morning, 7 a.m., I show up and he's at my door. He was the health inspector for Orange County. So I had to shut it down. And that was a sad day. But I have some money saved, but I don't know what to do with it, right? I have like $20,000 saved. And then my dad says, oh, my friend was telling me we can buy a gas station, you know? He hired uh, a loan officer to do my S SBA loan. And unfortunately, sadly, that guy, that guy turned out to be a con. So I lost all my 20 grand. It was depressing. That was my first basically near bankruptcy. Yeah. But it's super depressing because that was, you know, hard cash and hard earned money, you know? I, you know, made that money being discriminated, cost that. Uh, but, you know, I told myself, look, you know, it, maybe it wasn't meant to be. You know, you have to believe in that, you know. The, you know, if you put the effort, you put everything, good intentions, you put the hardest you can, and it doesn't work out, there's a reason for it, right? There is something better waiting for you. You gotta celebrate your failures and your success. Yeah, you know, that. because there is a lesson to be learned in everything. You know, when you have a great success, a good exit, you sell a company or whatever it may be, you celebrate because it's a good milestone in life. And then when you lose something bad happens, hey, it's an expensive lesson learned. You still celebrate it. Yeah. Because if, if you take it with a negative notation, that's just gonna keep eating you inside and it's gonna limit your upside. And then I, as I surround myself with 
more successful people. And that's a big secret to success as well. You know, you're a product of your environment. So always, you know, in, you know, find new friends that are older and more successful than you. So I was like a sponge, you know, learning from people around me, right? Yeah. So I uh, met this guy and he drove a convertible Porsche. And so what do you do? He goes, I own a mortgage company. And I'm like, oh, okay, what do you do? Loans and real estate? And I'm like, okay, cool. So I told him I worked for one entire company, but you know, he liked my, you know, my attitude, my motivation, my energy. He goes, hey, why don't you come, you know, do loan processing for me? I said, all right. So I got my real estate license. I worked for him for five or six months. And then I realized how much money you can make in loans because I was processing them. I see how much checks, commissions you were getting on each loan. And, and then I tried to uh, open my own mortgage company. I realized you need a broker. I met another guy through the circle that he was a broker, but he was not as motivated. Yeah. You know, because he was he, rich parents, you know. Yeah, yeah. But he was a broker. So I'm like, hey, Mark, why don't we open a mortgage company? I don't have a broker license, but you do we'll go 50-50. He's like, okay. So, but I was the go-getter one, you know, mostly. My process was with my investment was always reinvest the money. It's like, you know, buying a cow. You don't sell the cow, you sell the milk. And right. even when you sell the milk, you take part of the profit and invest it in a second cow. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and only with that thirty percent of it, whatever it may be, you go buy, you know, iPad, iPhone, whatever you have. So my mentality was always reinvest, 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 you know. Don't spend the principal, reinvest the cash flow, you know. And that's how I've amassed all this real estate. And I told myself, I said, hey, I'm gonna buy a Bugatti when I can buy 10 of them cash. So I made 200, you know, close to $300,000 my first year in a mortgage company, mostly from the auction house. And uh, so that was huge. I mean, I think out of the box, we gotta do something even more aggressive, right? Yeah. So 79 cents plus, and it was called El Badegon, which means in a Spanish warehouse. Yeah. So we opened that and we were doing great. We were making 30 grand a month. And uh, we said, okay, why don't we, you know, convert it to supermarket? Because every, you know, all the Hispanics, you know, they love to eat. And then it was doing fantastic. So we opened the second one. A big chain opened right next to us in Santa Ana. As soon as they had their grand opening, our sales dived 50%. And then so I sold it for $285,000. Took me one and a half years though. Yeah, wow. I remember I used to work seven days a week, 12, 13 hours a day. I used to close the register, take the money, and then go stop, stop by 24 hour fitness. I wasn't even going home. I stopped by the gym, throw the money in the safe, and then go to the gym and work out one and the I'm gonna sell it, I'm gonna sell it, I'm gonna sell it. <laughs> to me, the funny part is to me was the challenge because I really knew I could get out of it, you know? So you know when somebody like keeps doubting you, they say, oh, wow, bankruptcy, you're crazy. How are you gonna compete with people less? It's a big change. You know, to me, that was like a, hey, don't doubt me, you know? Yeah. So sometimes, you know, the, those negativity actually gives you a lift, you know? I love that. And uh, so that was great. So after a year and a half, I sold it. Uh, Two hundred eighty-five thousand dollars. I owed like one hundred forty thousand or one hundred eighty thousand on my credit cards. I was paying four thousand a month interest. <laughs> yeah. I lived in a one-bedroom apartment. I had sold my house, my cars. I had a five hundred sale. I had a Lexus LS four hundred. Back then, was a big deal. Yeah, right? of course. I had like two, three hundred thousand dollars in cars. I had to sell all those to keep up with the payments. And uh, so after a year and a half, I lost everything. I was negative net worth until I sold the supermarket. <laughs> then I took that money. It was. Uh, October of uh, 1990, December 1998 is when I sold it. And I opened an E-Trade account because I saw everybody, all my friends were making hundreds of thousands of trading stocks. I tripled it by September 1999. This is a lot of money. This is the most money I've ever seen. And I want to invest it in real estate. I put $200,000 cash down and uh, bought that property and I bought two other REO homes in Orange County. So I started with three properties from the money I made in the stock market. So I went from people telling me file bankruptcy, now I own a shopping center and two homes. You know, it's the, the, my motto is never give up because that's been, it's, it's just not a possibility. You know, for me, I'd rather die you know, than give up. <laughs> I made my first million when I was 29. It was like getting the taste of success is addicting, you know. You know, when I started, you know, selling junk from, you know, dumpsters <laughs> in the swap meet, I didn't know I'm gonna own all these cars on real yeah, estate. Yeah. I didn't even know I'm gonna end up being a real estate investor, you know. Uh, don't worry about, you know, five, 10 years from now. Worry about, worry about how can you improve today, you know, improve yourself mentally, physically, with people around you, and even your job, you know. Always be lookout, you know, on, on a better opportunity.
and then eventually you'll get there. If you're striving for a higher ground, you're gonna get there. But you don't have to worry about how you're gonna get on all to top of the mountain right now. Mm -hmm. You know, just do baby steps. You know, stepping stones. You know. Yeah. And that's what I would say. You know, don't have that anxiety. A lot of people are trying to figure the whole thing out right now, today. Yeah. And that's a mistake. You know, just know that it's gonna take time, and if you put your best foot forward, and you have your subconscious, it's gonna do the rest. Just focus on the bigger picture as you're climbing the mountain and invest in real estate and ignore the noise. There's always noise around you, always. Whether it's your own siblings or your friends, there's always people doubting you. You know why? Because that's the, their mentality. You know, they think that you can't do it and you know, you call them haters, call them whatever you want. Yeah. I call them dollars, but you know, dollars never, you know, uh, you know, discourage me. You know, they actually encourage me because I love showing them how it's done. What I say, you know, crush your fears. You know, whatever your fears are, as you face them and you overcome them, of course, you know, anyone that does anything for the first time, you know, it's a little scary, you know. Whether he's doing skydiving or, you know, jumping in the ocean for the first time, you know. Mm -hmm. If you got a fear of sharks, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, absolutely. but it's amazing the feeling you get afterwards. That's probably, you know, one of the key factors to improving yourself is facing your fears. You know, I always knew like anything I'm doing early on is a stepping stone. You know, with that mentality, I had a, you know, I had a much bigger picture in my mind. You know, I wanted to be a multimillionaire. I wanted to own a bunch of exotic cars, a big mansion. As a matter of fact, at age 15 or 16, I drew a mansion with some palm trees in front of it and two Mercedes. I, back then, I didn't know what the Ferrari is or Lamborghini. Yeah, yeah. I knew Mercedes, right? Yeah. So I, I drew two convertible Mercedes with palm trees. You know, you, you envision your dream where you want to be, and then your subconscious will take over. If you're, you know, if you really that. put the effort, your subconscious will do the rest.